There's something that online cannot do when it comes to the corporate presence of God. Uh, when it comes to the energizings of the Holy Spirit. It can do to a certain level online, but not to, to what uh, God is doing in a building. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 2, they were in the upper room. They didn't receive a letter afterwards or news. They, they were, those who initially received the infilling were in the upper room together. It didn't, the Holy Ghost didn't fall in other places. He didn't fall on the streets. He, didn't fall, he only fell in the upper room. Are you guys with me? There's a location which God usually marks for an outpouring. And uh, to this month we are busy with the month of the Holy Ghost. So with the Holy Ghost. And we're almost finished. I believe next week will be our last session. That's uh, when uh, we will open it up also. And we don't want you to, to miss that. But our services times have changed from, a, uh, from 9 a.m. to to 8 a.m. So just please remember that for those who are watching online, our live service is now 8 a.m. and no longer 9 a.m. So that we can be at both campuses on a Sunday morning and uh, uh, see that that is the only way to grow. Otherwise, it's like I'm here only every second week and it doesn't feel like momentum. So that's what we have planned for, for, uh, for this year. How many of you were at the marriage conference, the Art of Sex conference yesterday? Only some of you. Okay. Okay, so, um, uh, or not yesterday, yesterday and Friday. So the others, I'm sure you still have problems in your marriage. Oh, you're perfect. I think your marriage is perfect. And um, even Jesus can learn from you, you know. So, um, uh, go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. I want us to get into this. I want to give you this morning, and I want to, well, I'll see if we get there, I'm sure we will, but eight things that the Holy Spirit will do for you. Eight things that the Holy Spirit will do for you. Eight things that will happen when you're in a relationship with the Holy Ghost. Say with you, the angel of His presence. When the Bible refers to the angel of His presence, and I'll get to the scripture now, it's speaking of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. He would manifest and come as the angel of God's presence, carrying the presence of God to bring it towards people. Are you guys with me? Meaning that the angel of his presence, when you say you feel the presence of God upon your life, it does not come without the Holy Ghost. Unless you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, it cannot happen. It can happen in God's sovereignty, but not at a place where you have free access if i can say it like that to the place where the carrier of the presence comes and now the blood gives us free access but it doesn't stop by the blood are you guys with me a lot of people think but i have the blood and because i have a relationship with jesus christ it's okay i have access to the throne no 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 the priests blood was taken it was put upon their right toe their right thumb and their right ear the tip of the ear and then after the blood, oil was taken and was put over the blood. Which means that the Holy Spirit breathes only upon a vessel who is cleansed by the power of the blood. It doesn't come upon flesh. Are you guys with me? No flesh shall stand and glory in His presence. The Holy Ghost doesn't consecrate, sanctify or set apart flesh. He doesn't move upon something where there's just flesh. He moves upon those who know their right standing with God. What am I saying? Being sinless, never. You can never be sinless. But you know that the power of His blood has washed you. And that blood has moved you to a place where you're living a consecrated life. You're not just living a loose life anymore. Are you guys with me? A lot of Christians live a loose life and they are void of the power of the Holy Spirit. They live a loose, relaxed life and they wonder, but why do they feel empty or why is God not moving and working in their lives? But it's like everything goes in their lives. This thing goes, that thing goes. Um, this friend phones, they are there. 
This one wants to go on holiday. They are there. Not that it is bad. It's not even a sin. It's when it comes to obedience. What manner of life do you live where God can say, but you are a chosen vessel? Samson being given as a Nazarite, vowed as a Nazarite, Jesus coming in as a Nazarite. But what does it mean when we, the Bible speaks of a Nazarite vow? That no razor shall come upon his head and uh, he shall not drink wine and etc. and etc. Meaning that God knows that that vessel is clean. Why? For a certain purpose to be used by God. To be anointed of the Holy Ghost. God is looking for a vessel that is consecrated. That is set apart for his purpose. How do you do that? By spending time with him. But you are in a place that when God chooses to anoint you, he can. Do you know how many people miss visitations? Miss anointings? Because they are not in right standing with God or in alignment. Are you guys with me? Oh my goodness. Angels that has visited people. And they were unable to see the angel or hear the message because there was too much flesh. Kenneth e. Hagen wrote a book, I Believe in Visions. And uh, he was one of the people that had the most visions in our modern day. Uh, hours, sometimes 8 to 12 hours of Jesus just standing and talking to him, teaching him the scripture. And he would... He would uh, he would stand, he had a vision, and Jesus is talking to him, explaining to him things. And Kenneth Hagin talks as if it's normal. And then, on the right side, there was an angel that was also talking to him, but he couldn't hear the angel. The voice was just, the mouth was just moving. But, the, but Jesus was talking, and then Jesus stopped, and the angel started talking. And Kenneth Hagin says, but why? He says, Lord, why do I need an angel to talk if you are here? Why do I want to listen to an angel if you are here? And he said in the vision, the Lord rebuked him. And said, it is my system of operation. They are my messengers. You see, a lot of believers say, Jesus, talk to me. I'm not saying to, to talk to angels. I'm going to get to a point. Are you guys with me? First of all, God does not stand up from his throne. He has from, he worked on the first day, worked on the second day, worked on the third day, worked on the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day. From that day onwards... He rested. And he put in a system of, of uh, um, how can I say it? Um, uh, a residual. Uh, like when you have residual income. He put in a system that causes a residual, a system that up works apart from him. Totally separate from him. Meaning that God does not come and answer prayers. Each person individually, he has mess, he has he answers prayers. He's God, he's omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscience. But according to scripture, angels take your prayers. Brings it before his throne. He answered it. Angels take those prayers again and pours it out on you. And you think, thank you, Jesus. It's good to say, thank you, Jesus. But I'm trying to get, to explain to you the operational system of God. And so... Kenneth Hagin was saying, and, and Jesus said, listen, this is my system of operation. He says, and you were so much in the flesh that this angel already came to you a year ago. Tried to speak to you. To give you a message, but you couldn't hear. And Kenneth Hagin says, but I don't know where it is. And then the angel began to speak to me. He says, listen, I came to you a year ago. And you were in your trailer in America, in your mobile home trainer, trailer, and you were praying, and I walked in, and I could feel you were not in a place of right standing or alignment. And Kenneth Hagin remembered, and he said, yes, I was praying. And it felt like a person was walking into the trailer, and I looked, and I saw no one. He said, from that day already, I was supposed to bring you a message. Same with the Holy Ghost. There are visitations that God has. Aligned or a plan appointed for each person. Like I explained over the last few weeks, if you listen to the messages, how do you get a hunger? You pray and you ask Him. I promise you in a few days, there'll be a tugging in your spirit. 
where God begins to pull you towards Him. And when you ignore that, He backs off again. When you listen, to, when you submit to it and you're obedient to it, or you, 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 you adhering to that pull and that tugging, all of a sudden, His presence gets stronger. And the moment you heal the more, His presence gets stronger. Are you guys with me? I cannot explain to you the amount of encounters. I had. Yesterday, the angel of the Lord visited me. Speaking to me. As I was, I was sitting, I wasn't even thinking of God. And I felt a tugging. And the moment I opened my heart, the presence of God fell. And the angel of the Lord stood next to me. And a message came. And told me something that I have to do in a dignitary that I was speak, speaking to. But it's the presence of God that comes and we can either be distracted or be in the flesh and not be in a place of right standing with Him. So today the message I want to give to you, the eight things that the Holy Ghost will do for you, is in relation to also how you will be able to respond to Him and get into a place of receiving more from Him. Are you guys with me? Say with me the Holy Spirit. He is the most important person on the earth. He is the one you'll see today that he, what He will do for you. Eight things He will do for you, and He'll do much more for you than that. It's just main eight keys that I'm taking out. But He is the one that reveals Jesus Christ to you. He is the carrier of God's presence that comes to you. He is the one that teaches you, that guides you that opens up your eyes. He is the one that speaks to you about things to come in the future. He is the one that will cause you to have a relationship. He is the one that when you look at Him, He speaks to Jesus. Everything of Him speaks of Jesus. When you look at Jesus, everything of Jesus speaks about the Father. They testify of one another. Even though the Holy Spirit is speaking of Jesus, He's no less than Jesus. They are one, but they are the same. Are you guys with me? The presence of the Holy Spirit. People can come with the Bible and they can quote the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And I've even been with theologians and they can do all these fancy things. Void of the Holy Ghost. They can convince themselves as much as they want. Until they encounter His presence. Something in them knows they are wrong. But, like Stephen says, you keep resisting. And like your fathers have, you keep resisting the Holy Spirit as your fathers have resisted the prophets. You resist the Holy Ghost. You stiff-necked, uncircumcised people. Are you guys with me? I'm not speaking of you. I'm speaking of those who have just have the letter but not the Spirit. Do you know how unsatisfying it must be? To be in this word without the Holy Ghost. A religion, a demon will come in. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 verse 1. And for those who just came online, please do take a note that our services starts at 8 a.m. For now, I know a lot of people came on. 8 a.m., no longer 9 a.m. Uh, let's go to, let's go to verse 6. However... We speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming. Who are coming. However, we speak wisdom among in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man. The things, say with me, things, which God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed them, but, say with me, but. He says, I has not seen, nor has ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man. The things that I have for you, and no one will see it, but... God has revealed them to whom? To us. Say with me, us. Through His Spirit. Through His Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Say with me, the deep things. 
when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you have a relationship with Him, He opens up the depths of God for you. Christianity is about the depths of God. It is deep things. Are you guys with me? You have churches that are shallow and you have churches that are deep. You have preaching that is shallow and you have preaching that is deep. And you can determine and quickly discern, has this one been with God who is preaching? Are you guys with me? But God has revealed them to us. Yes, the deep things of God. Next verse. For what man knows the things of a man, except the spirit of a man that is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God, except the Holy Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit is from God, that we might know the things. So if we know the things that has been freely given to us, when you have the Holy Ghost, there will be a knowing of things that is yours. You don't have to work it out or be convinced. The Holy Spirit is the one that teaches you. Are you guys with me? And I pray that He will enter into this place this morning, tonight, that He will move and give things freely to people, that He will deliver many that are in this place. It is by the power of the Holy Ghost. By nothing else but by the blood and the Holy Spirit. Say with you the blood, the Holy Ghost. It is first the blood. He cannot come upon a life that is not saved. He can only come upon a life that is set apart. That is why He's called the Holy Spirit. He's looking for those who are walking in holiness and consecration in being set apart. Are you guys with me? Have your seats, have your seats. I've been freely given to us by God. Next verse. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual sympathy, which the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing spiritual things to spiritual things. So the Holy Ghost teaches. Next verse. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. You see, there are some natural people here today. They are unable to hear the message I'm speaking. They are unable to hear the words that comes out of my mouth. They might be sitting and falling asleep. They are, uh, they are in their natural state. They have not given their life to Jesus Christ. Or if they have, they have backslidden to the place of becoming carnal. And they can no longer receive the things of the Spirit. Which means they need deliverance or a resuscitation. If you do not understand the words that are coming out of my mouth, you fall into that category. Okay. Uh, because they are, they are foolishness to a person that is natural. They'll even say, but what is this foolishness that this one is speaking? Like the message of the cross is foolishness to those who don't believe. But to us who believe, it is the power of God. It might be foolishness to the world, but we know the power that it has given us to be delivered and set free. Nor can He know them because they are spiritually discerned. Next verse. But who are, He who is spiritual judges all things, discerns all things, and sets in order all things. Yet He Himself is rightly discerned by no one. Are you guys with me? They cannot figure him out. For the Bible says those who are of the Spirit, they are like the wind. You don't know whether they're coming or where they're going. The wind blows and you don't know where it's coming and where it's going. And so are those who are of the Spirit. You'll see them coming in and you'll see them going. Their mindset will be strange. Are you guys with me? Somebody asked me to do, to do a thing for them, like a message or so, and, uh, and they ordered me by a day. So it was like two days I was given. The next morning I was woken up by like alarms and things, little messages and saying, listen, according to our agreement, I said, listen, am I in a contractual agreement on giving a message that I need to give? I said, I am of the Spirit. I said, don't put your calendar on me. 
I said, I will give the thing later on. When I feel led. Jesus was not dictated by the needs of people. He was led by the Holy Ghost. He was led by compassion. Are you guys with me? Uh, that doesn't mean you can be late for work. It just means that when it comes to the Spirit, people will not be able to work you out. When the Holy Ghost comes on you, they will think you are strange. Some will think you are rude. Some will judge you. Some will say, look how rude he is. He doesn't even greet me. huh?" If you are anointed. I'm not saying if you are trying to be spiritual, but you are not. Like a Pentecostal. No, when you are anointed and the Holy Ghost touches you and He anoints you, you will offend the religious mind. You will offend the traditional mind. You will offend those who are familiar with you and close to you. Because you will not do or be dictated by their schedule or by their their, their, their pressure because the spirit you're, you're led by someone else now, no longer people you're led by the one that is like the wind, he blows and breathes and then he disappears no one knows where the wind comes from or where it goes nobody knows how it is created, it just comes it's invisible but it has effects and just because it's invisible doesn't mean it's not there are you guys with me so are those who are of the spirit so let's go to let's go to um, let's go to Ephesians five eighteen. Ephesians five eighteen. I don't know. I want to get through this. Uh, I have half an hour left with you. <laughs> and do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Say with you, be filled. He says, listen. Do not be drunk with wine. But be ye filled, be ye being filled. The word filled means being filled continually every single day. But it's taking filled with the Holy Ghost, equating it to the drunkenness with wine, which tells you the moment somebody is filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm speaking of a full infilling, it will look or sound like they are drunk. In Acts chapter number two, Peter stood up and he says, Men, do not suppose that these are drunk, but they are filled with the Holy Ghost. Do not suppose that when you look at them and you see tongues as of fire sitting upon them, speaking in other languages, and they are working miracles, maybe they are full of joy, or they cannot walk because they are so filled with the Holy Ghost. They are charged up with electricity. Do not suppose that they are drunk. For it is only 9 a.m. in the morning. It is not, they are not drunk as you suppose. They are filled with the Holy Ghost. For as the prophet Joel prophesied, that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and my spirit shall come upon all flesh. Say with me, all flesh. He says, this is simply a fulfillment of prophecy. Are you guys with me? Have you seen? So do not be drunk with wine. So I have, I know people have their doctrines on drinking and etc. And we will never violate or never make a sin what scripture doesn't say is a sin. But the scripture speaks of weights. So it speaks of sin and it speaks of weights. Are you guys with me? I'll never say, um, uh, the scripture also doesn't say TB is a sin. But it can become a sin to me. Um, so, I have never seen a minister flow in the Holy Ghost, flowing in the river of God, who drinks. I've seen ministers who drinks, who might have a little bit of power, or who drinks and they have a church. But I've never seen them flow in a river of the Holy Ghost. They cannot discern the currents of the river. Because another spirit is, is, is present. Because the Bible says he equates that you can either have one or the other. Are you guys with me? So the Bible speaks of sin and weight. Sin and weights, Weights that carry and pull us down. Makes our walk difficult. Which means I can minister here but I cannot discern the winds. Or I cannot discern the currents of where the spirit is leading. My sails are not up 
to discern and feel where the Holy Spirit is blowing and breathing. Are you guys with me? Sensitive things. Again, where does, whom does the Holy Spirit anoint? The one that is saying, I'm giving you my whole life. Not 90%, not 80%. I'm surrendered and healed it to you. Are you guys with me? So I want us to get into, into this, and I want to give you a secret when it comes to what happens when we spend time with God and how can we spend time with God. Go with me to, um, go with me to, uh, go with me to Psalm 80 verse 18. Psalm 80 verse 18. Zedano. Psalm 80 verse 18. Then we will not turn back from you. Revive us. Say with you, revive us. And we will call upon your name. Listen to me. David says, I need a reviving in my spirit. Then, say with you, then, I will call upon your name. The word and in the Hebrew is kai, which can also be translate, translated as then, when you read it in scripture. So when, when the translators would have to, would have to transcribe the, the, the scripture, they would sit and say, okay, what fits in the best year, and or then? Because it's the same word. Then we will call upon your name. Meaning once there is a quickening. Say with me a quickening. Give me the scripture in, 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 in the book of Romans. I think it's Romans chapter number 8. It will quicken our mortal bodies. Let me just get it here. Zenando. Eight eleven. Listen, go to go to uh, Romans eight eleven. Unless God quickens us, we cannot even pray. You'll go sit in your room and you'll be like and there'll just be nothing. Or you'll pray a prayer in English and there'll be nothing. Maybe you're persistent, you can go for an hour, but there'll be nothing. You can even sit in a prayer meeting. And praying, and this feels like there's nothing for you because there's not a quickening. Are you guys with me? There's not a quickening from God coming from the Lord. You're trying to do it in the flesh. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead gives a life. So if He gives a life, in another translation, it says, quickens our mortal bodies through His Spirit, through His Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Meaning we need a reviving and a quickening in this area of flesh to even call upon His name. Are you guys with me? How do I get that quickening? Go to Psalm 62 verse 1. I'll get to the eight things now. Psalm 62 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Truly my soul silently, so it is silently, waits for God. Because from Him comes a be still and know that I am God. Like I said, there's a place of silence. There's a place of stillness. There's a place where you can reach in the realm of the Spirit. That where you just sit and wait upon Him. And when you wait upon him, you shall mount up like wing on the wings of eagles. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk, you shall run and not faint. You shall walk and not be weary. Are you guys with me? And he will give you strength. Go with me to uh, 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 Psalm 130 verse 5. I'm, I'm letting you know, how do I get quick? And so with this silently waits. Psalm 130 verse 5. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in His word I do hope. Say with you, waiting. I'm letting you know how to get an encounter with God. Tarry in Jerusalem until the promise comes down, until I clothe you with power from on high. But what do you have to do? Wait in Jerusalem. But it is not just a waiting. There was a contemplative waiting. There was a waiting that is a silence in the spirit. Next, uh, uh, go with me to 25 verse 5. Psalm 25 verse 5. 
Psalm 25 verse 5, guys. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Oh, you, I wait, sorry, on you, I wait. Say with me, I wait. All the day. Do you have the ability in your, I'm not saying, listen, there's two things on to wait. If you're immature, and all of you are immature, so don't skip now to the mature place. If you're immature, you can get, you must close everything and get into a secret place. Shut everything behind you and even put your phone outside. And as you do that, then there you wait for God. When you get to, when you get to know the movements and the currents of the Spirit, you can go along with your everyday things, but you know, your Spirit knows how to wait. Because you know how to detect the currents of the Holy Ghost. Are you guys with me? I received a testimony from the uh, person who got healed on TV. Are they here? Is it you guys? Because I'm walking there and looking. Just stand for me quickly. Was it the, was it the Monday night we prayed for you? Um, was it the Monday night? And you guys went to, to the doctor? So, so tell, tell us the story. Do you want to tell us? Okay, sorry. Yeah, I've, um, we got quite a scare. Brett was very sick at Christmas time. I've never seen my husband so sick. I thought he was dying. Sorry, it was hard. But um, we went on the 31st of December to, to the doctor, and he said, no, he thinks this is prostitutes. We had to go for blood tests. We're not on a medical aid. So we had to sort of dig deep. But we got enough money to pay for this, um, the PSA test, which is a tumor test. And I want to just pray for you. Come stand in front also. I, just, I need, you guys need prayer also. Where do you come from? <laughs> it's a drive through. all the way through to you. So, so explain, explain to me. Just and so, so the doctor said that it's prostatitis. It's prostatitis. And he was very concerned because the prostate count was very high, 21.28, which is very high because I worked for a doctor for nine years and the highest I ever saw was nine and that was cancer. So, you know what? I just put it before the Lord. Brett and I prayed. And when you had that faith TV for the four or four days, we rushed in back in from work because he works far away in Bud Plus. He got back. It was just as you were starting to pray. Stood together in our kitchen and we held hands and we prayed with you along for that healing. And then we took communion. When you took the communion, we just trusted God that the next day he would be healed. And the urologist, we'd never seen him before, and he was looking for this tumor, and he was so scanning round and round and round, and he couldn't find anything. <laughs> go to and wait a bit to get rid of what was he had to have three glasses of water before we went but it was still full and he said this is enormous but I can't find the tumor so anyway he says we had to have an operation to reduce the size of it but with not being on medical aid again we had to exercise the faith and I had to pray for a suddenly <laughs> and God did a suddenly for us <laughs> First of all, said it was going to cost fifty-five thousand, but when the quote came back, it was sixty-eight thousand. So I said, "Okay, Lord, you're the God of the Kingdom Bank. You know our needs. You know what we need to work for Brick to get through this, so that he can just be normal. Please, can you provide?" And while we were sitting there in my mo uh, no, the um, the office, the, the urologist's office, my mom phoned. 
And she says, I've sold my flat and I've got money for you. You have that operation if you need it. I've got money for you. She put 150000 in my account. 